Hello, welcome back. So we're going to do a full-fledged demo. I'm not going to speed this up um, of light painting. So if you want to take something that looks similar to this and create something like this, stick around. So let's talk about the composition first. Um, gray sheet, kind of a gray vase, really doesn't matter. It's longer. That's great. Pink flowers, beige wall, and the composition. Um, it's going to be very symmetrical. It's going to be right up in front, center, the flowers. Hopefully we'll get equal space on each side of the flowers. If not, we'll crop and do some things in post, but just notice the colors. So we want to complement the colors with this with a light green, kind of the opposite of pink. And in doing that, what we're going to do is we're going to use a green light and we're going to do some light painting, get the, get a primer down or the base down. We'll start working into the other elements as, as well. So here's the situation. I have four cameras total. I have three rolling video and one, an iPhone actually doing the image capture. So once this all gets set up, lights are going to go totally off. You'll see me in the dark. The video is going to get grainy because essentially there's going to be very little light around here to actually do video. But once we notice that, I'll walk you through the, the paintbrush strokes, how we go about doing this and, and getting the exposure the way we want. And so some things to note, when you're doing any exposures, um, generally you don't want to overexpose in light painting because you just can't get that back. You can raise it up a couple notches. The other situation is we'll be shooting in a 16 by nine format 16 by 9 aspect ratio fits just about everything from video monitors to your wall and that. So that's that's one other thing. Yeah, and uh, let's shut off the lights and get started. Okay, so the, the first aspect is we're going to paint the background. And... Uh, we're just going to use some simple strokes. We're not going to burn anything in or try any detail. We're just going to slowly kind of illuminate the backdrop and try to get everything to be somewhat green. So we'll step away. What we'll do there is this. This could take anywhere depending on your sensitivity of your camera. Minutes, two seconds, depending on the ISO setting. But that being said, get kind of cool. It lightens things up. We'll try to get an even, actually an even painting on this, <clears throat> an even paint job. And I think that that works out all right. And so with this, we can kind of see it. See the photos slowly starting to come to life, at least the background. Yeah. And now, now we'll start on the cloth, the cloth in front, the table. Remember not to actually flash the flashlight right in front of the lens because you'll get some weird funky discoloring, almost like paintbrush. It's nice to do it sometimes, but you want to try to keep the light right directly out of the lens. All right, so we can see that we're lighting the tablecloth, which is nice. We'll do that. This will take a little bit longer. Yeah. Kind of get an even exposure here. What we're going to do is just kind of bathe, bathe all this in green light, green primer. It's going to take a while. Nice thing about doing this versus let's say wildlife is you have complete control and you're actually filming something. There's, there's sometimes when you're photographing animals, they just do not cooperate. So this is kind of the yin and the yang, the the chaos versus control. And this kind of makes things fun. All right, so we could see, we could see that the table cloth is actually getting illuminated 
and I'm going to straighten that out there. Up front here, Let's see what we can do. And it's really just kind of going back and forth with the light on even, even strokes, just trying to keep it consistent. If you stop in one area, that is when you're going to get hit with what we call burn in. You're going to really burn in the color and then it's going to turn white or blown out. So this is pretty funky. We see the green. Everything's green, right? Yeah. We'll kind of pull this up. And what I'm going to do now is expose for the flowers, the pink flowers, once I get up here to a certain extent. Get a little bit more of this. Yeah, there we go. It's a nice blending in of green to the gray. And yeah, you'll see what I mean here in a minute. But that color just kind of slowly goes up from the table into the vase, which we're kind of kind of paint it right in and that. So, okay, we're going to stop this part. So we're going to try exposing uh, the top of the flowers, this piece. And with that, we're going to use the smaller flashlight. Uh, so we don't want some blending. We can get, get away with the, the other larger flashlight, the, the white on this, but we're first going to try a little bit slower method. Now this is more accurate. This is when you really need to get down into the details and you don't want your light spreading all over the rest of the photo, all over the rest of the set, you get what call, I, I'm going to call it paint, paint splatter. So you can just kind of slowly work it through and you'll see, you'll see the slowly starting to show up. You'll see it formate, formating or getting the color in. And uh, yeah. And it's, it's careful to know, since it's so dark in here, you, sometimes you have a tendency to bump, bump your subject. You kind of run in, bump a table, bump something, and then you kind of start losing your focus. And speaking of focus, this camera is pretty much on locked focus. Once you do light painting, you're going to want to turn off automatic focus and manually focus it. That way, um, when it's completely dark like this, your camera is going to be searching in and out, especially if you have continuous focus, your camera is going to be going crazy. So you got to actually sit it off to set it to manual focus. And let's see what that looks like. It's starting to come alive a little bit. I don't want to overexpose this, but I want to make sure I get all these little pieces kind of showing, but I got to be careful too, not to get the front of the light into the lens or you'll get that smudging look. Sometimes it can be nice, but um, it can actually look like paint strokes. But other times it, uh, it can look kind of horrible. And again, just kind of going back and forth with these subjects or with the, with the, with the brush. All right. So that's kind of cool. So, Here's the situation. We have a really green, light green, lime green with some pink flowers. I'm going to fill this in just a little bit. It just bugs me. I want to make sure I get everything. And then uh, what we'll start is some other magic. Hopefully, this is the trickiest part coming up of the actual light painting, in my opinion because there is definitely some practice that you need to do. But yeah. All right. So not bad, not bad. It's coming to life. And you say, depending on what you're gonna do with the photo, meaning if you're just gonna leave it on a screensaver, you can expose the photo at a certain, at a certain exposure. But if you're going to print it, you need to actually up your exposure by two or three stops to get it on a print. And that's one of the things. You might look at a photo on a screen, and then when you go to print it, it looks almost dead. It just doesn't have any color. 
it doesn't necessarily have any light in it. And that's just something you get with a little bit of practice. But so you kind of want to gauge what you want to do with this before you start. But for the most part, we're going to underexpose this photo or this, this light composition a little bit. Okay, so that's good. Now, here's the deal. Hopefully we can see a little magic. Now this, this composition doesn't look all that fantastic, but you know, we talk about the pink, we talk about the pink with um, the green and it sets it apart and it's kind of cool, but it's a little overbearing. The pink is just, or I should say the green, the lime green is so potent in this. It just, eh, it's not really. So what we could do is start adding other colors in this. We can deaden it out. Now the, the main theme behind this is you won't notice if, if this works is we're going to add some red to this. So red and green kind of make an orange or a brown color. And we're going to add some texture to this, the background, but underlying the whole theme of this is you're going to see some green mixed with the flowers, but we're going to add in some orange. We're going to add in some other colors. And in that way, um, it's going to put some texture and it's going to make things look a little bit different. So let's see what we can do here. We're now switching to the red light and we're just going to play and we're going to paint everything again with the red light to give it a little bit of texture, a little bit of texture, a little bit of something different. And, uh, yeah, you can see it changing. See it changing a little bit. And that's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. See, it's, it looks almost like a weathered wall now as, as we put this on. And uh, yeah, and so we're gonna push this actually on the tablecloth as well. We're gonna put this on the tablecloth as well. But you notice there's always gonna be a little bit of that tint of that green in there, which is pretty slick. So it's subtle. It's, it's kind of a subtle makeup. And in doing that, it's not so over the top, but when you get into it, it's like, wow, it just seems to work. I'll kind of burn in. So the slower you move your, your light, kind of the more intense things will get. I should say that it will, you'll get burn in, but that's kind of the texture. So if you slow down, you can create like bokeh effects. You can create all kinds of things. It almost looks like a 1.1 photographic lens because you get these round circles. You can purposely do that. So let's do this. We're going to do the tablecloth now. And we're actually going to work our way up the vase. Kind of like it's just bleeding like this, this rustic reddish brown green color is just all over. It's just kind of bleeding into it. This is the part that takes a while. You say this, this kind of stuff could take, ah, it could take anywhere from five minutes to an hour. Just kind of keep moving. Kind of keep moving through this. It's kind of going back and forth, evening things out. You know, we can even things out here and, uh, Kind of keep moving through this. This is the part you got to kind of really gauge because as you watch the exposure, it kind of sneaks up on you. Kind of really does sneak up on you. One minute it, it looks like it's underexposed and the, the, 
the actual the iPhone or your capture device just all of a sudden turns really hot. It just all of a sudden, hey, you're exposing, you're overexposing, you're doing this, you're doing that. And so, yeah. If you want to speed this up a little bit, what you can do is up your ISO. Uh, I turned it down. It's a safer way. So most of the time when you end up with a mistake in light painting, it's because you kind of went too fast when you're doing this. You just, you got, you got in a hurry, you got your ISO set too high, and then everything gets burnt in right away. It just, oh. You know, you notice that kind of thing where, oh, I overexposed or I've done this or I've done that. But if you turn down your ISO, it gives you a little bit more chance to see the exposure happen. It slows down that exposure so you can catch yourself. You can kind of catch yourself when you're really kind of get, getting after it. You know, you can get a brighter light, get the brighter lights in that. But yeah, so the thing is, is you just got to take your time. And, and it feels so weird because you're taking a 30-minute capture and you just feel like you need to be in a hurry. You don't want to waste it, but you don't want to waste your time or you don't want to lose the exposure. The nice thing about this is versus painting or any kind of other endeavor, there's nothing that smells. You're not going to spill anything on your carpet. You're not going to, you know, break something. And... Um, you know, ruin the carpet, make a mess. All you got to do is just hit reset and start over, which is, which is kind of nice. That's kind of nice when you got that flexibility and that. So we're starting to see the photo come a little bit alive. Some different textures. All right, there's that. See if we can get over there, get behind it. Again, this kind of takes, kind of takes the uh, the most part out of it, right? This is this is where it's at. Long exposure. Kind of keep working it, working it around. Getting closer, getting closer to some tents and that. It's always kind of a constant going back and forth, seeing what works. It's kind of seeing what works with uh, your photograph, you know, seeing how, how things get painted on and uh, seeing the textures kind of evolve. Do the back of this table. You can kind of see on the back of this table, there's almost like a, there's obviously a drop off, but I really like the back of this table. I really like that black kind of shadow. And uh, it just looks kind of ominous. It just kind of looks a little different there. Yeah, we're getting something. All right, I'm gonna have to go up and over because I want to get the top I want to get the top right above, kind of darken in, right above that.
And this is the thing with, with this app is, with the way we're doing this, is you can stop and really take a look at it, save it off, and then say, I want a little bit more exposure. And you can go back in and you can just keep shooting. You can reshoot. I've asked the, the developer of the app to see if we could load in an image, but uh, no reply on that one yet. But that would be really cool, is to be able to load it in at a different time Maybe fix some things, maybe do some things. We can always ask. All right, what are we talking? How much, how much time we've been here? Quite a bit, but it is something. It's, it's slowly coming around. Fill in these spots. See some green, so we want to try to get rid of, you know, hints of green. But that's the thing, you know, we want the hints of green, but we don't want a full green palette because it just it's just overwhelming. We just don't want it all green, so slowly work it out. Come back here. You'll notice I'm bouncing from spot to pot spot, and that's to let the long exposure kind of catch up because it usually takes a second or two delay. So if you give it some time, you'll start seeing other spots where you've exposed with the light all of a sudden kind of come in. It, start, it starts really just kind of coming in and uh, yeah. This really kind of starts focusing, kind of showing you what can be done. All right, what do I like? What do I dislike? Let's see if we can do this. Sometimes you can slowly move the light kind of in and out and just kind of create this different look. And do this. Closer you get with the light, the more intense um, the look you're going to get, the faster the feedback and that it's just more intense. All that light being put down on there also gives a greater risk of you overexposing. Getting closer. Just kind of going back and forth. Is you do have to be careful because it's dark and you bump anything you're kind of done okay we're getting a little better
closer. And what we do after this, you know, in post-processing, we can do a bunch of different effects. We can create it into a more of an oil painting look, kind of a cloth look. We can make it super sharp, to almost like it's a painting. There's just all different kinds of combinations because when you get something with light painting, it just doesn't look like a regular photograph. So it takes to any kind of modifications a little bit more harshly, sharply, that kind of situation. So this might look a little soft here, but once you start adding things, let's see what the back of this looks like. Okay, we're getting closer. Do a little bit more. I think we're going to call it good right here. Go back and forth. So what we could do is play with color and contrast after this in post-processing and make some things really work. You can do a little bit of vignetting, kind of give it a little dithered approach. Yeah. And yeah, it's about right. So there's this, which be that over there. sure we don't overdo this but yeah go back here check this out Get some recording going on we're at 25 minutes yeah and what do we look like on the back of the screen? This is always a difference in screens, guys. Yeah, I think we're, we're really close. Do a little bit more next to the stand. Okay, I'm gonna save this. Say, save, do another save. And so what you can do with this application is you can do a double save and then start right back up. So if you want a safety area, let's say you're really happy with something, you can save it off and then go for broke. You could really try to, try to do something kind of interesting. So I'm curious, let's, what happens if we add blue? I'm going to save this one here and I'm going to add some blue. And I think we got this photograph. Yeah, we got that on. So we're at 27 minutes. Yeah. Let's try something weird. I don't know how this is going to work, guys. That's the thing. Look at that blue come in. A little bit different colorization. It's coming in as pink a little bit here and there. So we could do that. Let's try a little bit of pink around here. You can actually call this over there. Try to see if we can pinken this up. There it goes. Look at those different, almost different textures coming in. 
It's different colors, but it just kind of looks like it has some texture to that color. Okay, I am happy. I'm going to save that and turn on the lights and talk for a sec. All right. Whew. I've never timed myself. I've never timed myself as, as far as that. That went a lot longer than I thought. I, I think it looks good. I, I'm going to do some post-processing a little bit here and there. For the most part, I don't do a whole lot of Photoshop, but I can. And in some instances, I think I'm going to turn this into a canvas look, um, some other things. But all in all, you know, 28, 30 minutes, that's what it takes, right? I've never timed it. I looked at the, the recorder. Yeah, 30 minutes. And uh, a lot of these are a bust. You know, you could go through, spend 30 minutes and start over, but you're not wasting any paints. You're not wasting much of all. All you got is lights off, reset, you're good to go. So that, yeah, I'll, I'll roll the photo. And I got another one as well. I'll, I'll, I'll show you. This was my practice run before this. And yeah, I'll let you guys take a look at this. Not too bad for an iPhone, right? You know, this is the creative thing. All these camera companies are coming out with more megapixels, better sensors, but really for creativity, you just want some apps that allow you to do crazy things. And um, it's on the iPhone, so I'm gonna go with it. Anyway, guys, I hope this helps. Um, comments, questions, concerns, hit that subscribe button and I will see you next week. So